I always say that I think life is like a stained glass window. I think if you look at the stained glass windows, I want to tell you what I think today. In every stained glass window, there are many, many, many pieces of glass. Hundreds, maybe thousands here in our cathedral. They're all different sizes and they're all different shapes. They're all different colors. They're all different hues. If you want a picture of my life, I think that's the best way to see it. Because all of those pieces are all of you. My family, uh, the priests with whom I've served in three dioceses, the deacons, the women and men religious, and hundreds and hundreds, all being a part of my life. I think of all of the people in the diocese where I've served. Some of them, without even knowing it, being such an important piece in my life. The bishops, uh, with whom I've been privileged to walk now for 25 years, the cardinals, certainly the papal nuncio. There were three papal nuncios involved in my life. Father uh, Archbishop Jadot was the nuncio when I was made the auxiliary bishop in New Hampshire. Cardinal Laghi was the nuncio when I went to Wilmington. My first audience with our Holy Father, he had the map and he said, how far from Manchester to Wilmington by car? And I said, eight hours, eight hours. Who put you there? <laughs> I said, you put me there. <laughs> and he said, are you happy? I said, I was. And Archbishop Cachavillan put me in Providence. And that's uh, why I'm delighted to welcome Archbishop Montalvo today and tell him I've gone to enough places now. <laughs> Just remember me in your prayers. <laughs> and when the age of retirement comes, look favorably upon me. <laughs> that age 75, three more years to go, Frank. <laughs> but I want you to go back to those stained glass windows. I want you to try to identify where you are, the small piece, a large piece, a major piece. But if you look up closely at those stained glass windows, you're going to see heavy black lines of lead running through the whole window. And those are the disappointments, the failures, the setbacks, the sorrows the heartache, the tears that come into every single life on this earth. We're identified with the suffering Christ, as we know during this Easter season. If you take those heavy black lines of lead out, the whole window falls apart. That's part of our identity with Christ. And if during these past weeks and months, uh, the lead seems to be particularly dark and painful to the church, especially in the United States, it's part of our life. It's been part of the life of the church. But we can't remove sorrow. We can't remove heartache. We can't remove the tears. They're part of life. And what we do today, at least what I hope I've done today, in which I invite all of you today, is to thank God that God's light has shone through it all. The joyful, the glorious, and the sorrowful mysteries. 
And as you thank God that God's light has shone through all my mysteries, I hope that all of you will pray that God will do the same in your lives. You can't run away from problems. You can't walk away from sadness. But together with God, we can do such wonderful things. May all of us, as the gospel said, walk with Jesus along our roads to Emmaus. And may he help us to understand May he help us to change. May he help us to become more wonderful. May he help us to reach out with greater love to more people. And may God bless us all. Amen.